Hi guys, I hope you guys are doing well today. I was thinking um, of the movie Enough with Jennifer Lopez. Um, that movie is about a abusive woman who escapes from her husband with her daughter. And at the beginning of the movie, she was a very timid, very, um, very soft-spoken woman, but she went away and gained a lot of confidence, and she learned how to box, and she was able uh, to defeat her husband. And um, I got this sense that we... Um, myself included, we in the body of Christ ha ha have let the devil hoodwink us for too long. We've been going um, through different cycles of sin and self-doubt and all, all those awful tapes that we have... Um, been playing in our mind. It could be something that happened in childhood. It could be um, something that happened in our early life, or it could be something that happened when we were young people. And it's still plaguing and it plaguing because it, it um, seeds can be seeds planted could be good or it could be bad good seeds blossom into something amazing. They can sprout into wonderful words of affirmation and wonderful words of life and peace and hope. Um, but bad seeds can sow self-doubt and cause us to go through cycles and causes to form chains because a chain um, st doesn't start off as, as this big thing. It starts off as um, one little decision um, that can really destroy us. And I was thinking of this movie with Jennifer Lopez and um, I was thinking of the negative tapes that we let replay and replay in our minds that we're not good enough, we're not as good as this person at doing things, we, just because we struggle with things, we're disqualified, and just because we, um, we have this issue, God can't use us, or because we look like this, God can't use us, and the funny thing is we don't say these negative things, but we think them in our minds, but we don't dare say them. We don't bring light to the darkness. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Enough. Enough of playing with the devil. Enough of these negative tapes enough of these negative thoughts, enough of thinking that we're not good enough, enough of letting, of letting the world tell us that we're not good enough, that we have to take a back seat, that quote unquote religion is not, um, has no place in public society. I'm like, enough with that. It's time for the church to rise and take their proper place. And what I mean by rise is rise subtly. Quite often the church has been uh, way too forceful in, in our version of rise. We, we shout at street corners and all that stuff. And that doesn't get people into the kingdom. What we need to do is do it subtly. Start with your friends. 
start with your family. Start with just showing kindness to people, showing grace to people, showing love to people, and you'll be surprised about how, how, how when you give people what they need and show them Jesus in a way they can understand and cope with, they'll want your Jesus. And we'll just be able to, so, to um, beat the devil at his game that he's playing. And you know, and to say what you, and to say, you know what? We're not taking this anymore. We're not taking violence on the street. We're not taking another person being shot. We're not taking another teen being lost to suicide. We're not taking it anymore. And if we begin to rise and unify, it'll turn the world upside down. We need to begin to say, you know what, enough. We need to get our spiritual muscles, our spiritual punching bag, and begin to just punch the devil metaphorically into um, out of this world. And we can. It said the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. And I think the only way to do it is for us to rise and say, enough, enough with division, enough with this and that, enough with you're black, I'm white, and we're not going to socialize together because uh, one believes in pre-trib and one believes in, in post-trib. The world needs the church. The world needs us. And it's time out for petty nonsense that we have um, perpetuated throughout the years. It's time for us to come together. I saw something wonderful uh, in my dreams the other night. I saw churches. Um, you see how, how all these uh, churches have their own internet broadcast? Well, I saw um, churches coming together as one and just taking to their streets all across countries all across the U.S., all across Canada, pastors and elders and leaders, known and unknown, just Anglican, Pentecostal, Methodist, everyone, just um, crying out to the Lord and putting our little theological differences aside. The world's in trouble. And it's about time we say, enough. It's about time we, we just don't roll over and say, oh, Satan, you can beat us up. Because that's basically what we're saying. That's basically, like, by not saying anything, we are co complicitly say, giving Satan permission to hoodwink us, to roll over us and play dead. I, for one, am not doing that anymore. I am saying enough. You can't take half my mind. You can't take, take my joy. You can't take my peace. You can't take my family. You can't take, you can't take my you can't take anything of me. I want it back. And if we say, I want it back, and when he comes, sometimes when we give it over, it'll come back into our mind. But we have to keep surrendering it. We have to keep saying, nope, enough is enough. And sometimes we struggle in the dark, but it's time to come out into the light and say, look, I'm struggling with 
my sex drive. I was struggling with um, lying. I'm struggling with stealing. I'm struggling with cheating. I'm struggling with gossiping. I'm struggling with whatever you are struggling with. Because if you're struggling with it, other people are struggling with it too. Solomon said, there is nothing new under the sun. Isolation breeds um, uh, loneliness and it breeds the, the mis misconception that you're the only one. The reason why the devil wants us to keep our struggles a secret is because he wants to trick us. He wants to hoodwink us and to make us think that we are the only ones. Beloved, whatever sin you're struggling with, you are not the only one. You are not the only one going through pain. You are not the only one going through hurt. And you are not alone. There is someone going through the same thing that you are. And we need to create a safe places for people to just come and bear their heart. Enough with this whole, oh, we need to shake off our he heavy, heavy bands and just, just pretend to worship and pretend everything is okay. We don't need to, to do that. What we need to do is bring our brokenness to God. Bring our brokenness right there and say, Lord, I'm broken, but I'm here. Lord, I'm weak, but I'm here. Lord, I'm struggling, but I'm here. And surrender. And surrender is not just a one-time thing. So Surrender is a daily choice to say, Lord, today I'm laying it down. And you will fall, but it's okay. It's okay. God knows where you are. And eventually... He will take you through a process and it will become easier and easier and easier. It won't be easy to start, but the more you surrender, the more you give up control, the more you just give it over to God. He will provide the strategy for you to get through what you need to get through. You're not alone and it won't be easy. But the harder it is, the more muscle you 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 build. See, um, the more weight you have in your life is the more muscle you build. Because I lift weights um, occasionally. Um, and when I got diagnosed with diabetes uh, a few years ago, uh, the the therapist put me on, to, the doctor put me on to a therapist and the, and the physio uh, put me on to lifting weight. And I realized the more weight I lift is the more strength I get. And I, I don't, I, I didn't get stronger by lifting them once and that's it. I had to daily lift them. So sometimes you have to daily lift the weight or daily surrender the weight. And then as you surrender the weight, as you lift it, it becomes easier and easier and easier. Don't be afraid to lift weight. Don't be afraid of the weight surrender it surrender both the weight in weight as in as in pounds and weight as in when you're waiting for something so surrender both weights somebody out there listening to me right now is waiting for something the lord says surrender the weight Surrender the time that you're waiting. Don't stress about waiting for that particular thing. Just know that God has got you. And he will 
brings to pass what you're waiting for. That was his word. It wasn't just you. He did tell you that particular thing. So surrender the weight. Surrender the weight. Surrender the weight as in pounds, like what you're carrying, surrender it, and surrender the time you're waiting for that thing. And don't let the devil trick you into saying, oh, it won't happen, oh, it won't do that. Don't let him spin your brain into cycles. Tell, tell the devil, tell those voices, tell those tapes to shut up and tell them enough, enough. And when, they br when he brings that to you, um, quote Ephesians 6, 10, put on the whole armor of God. And Ephesians 6, 10, verse 10 to 18 is really good if you want to know what your weapons are. So use those weapons. Quote that scripture. Read it from your Bible every day. And it will, it's a great weapon for your arsenal. And whatever you're going through, there is a scripture for every, every trial, everything you're going through. Find that scripture and quote it, take it to your heart every day because the word will carry you through. I'm not the best at reading the word every day, God knows, because I have issues with reading. But... But I do listen to the word as often as I can, not every day, sometimes not even weekly, but I've hidden the word in my heart. I've hidden the word in my heart, and when I need it, it comes. But I do talk to the Lord every day, and sometimes talking to the Lord is all you need to do. Sometimes, depending on who you are, God will, God will talk to you. God will reveal his precious secrets to you in dreams. That's why I, all, or through friends, or however he does that, that's why I always say, you need to find your own rhythm, rhythm with God, because when you do, you'll know how he speaks to you. You'll know if he speaks predominantly, predominantly through the Bible, or he speaks to you through, through friends, or maybe that still small voice, because he knows what person, what kind of person you are. He knows what you need to, to understand him. He knows how you communicate. He knows each and every one of you. And he sees you when he loves you. And he just, he just wants you to live life more abundantly. He says, beloved, I wish above all things, not some things, not most things, but all things, that you would prosper and be in good health. And that prosperity over there, there I believe, is talking about emotional prosperity physical prosperity, financial prosperity, yes, and spiritual prosperity. He wants you to prosper in all areas. But in order for you to prosper, you need to drop those tapes in your head and tell the devil, tell those uh, so-called friends that mean you no good, enough, enough. I'm not listening to your negative your negative tips anymore. Now constructive feedback is different. Always listen to, always listen to the people that God has put in your life to give you constructive feedback, whether it be a spouse or whether it be a friend or your parent. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about haters that every time you get around them they're negative and they just mean you no harm. Well they Excuse me, they mean you nothing but harm. 
don't listen to those people. Tell them, you know what, enough. Enough. I don't need you talking negative about my purpose. I don't need you. I don't need you injecting your false logic and venom um, under the guise of your you're using wisdom to help me when you're just jealous. Be careful of the people you hang around. Now it's really important that you are very, very, very careful of the people you hang around because the people you hang around, if you let them, can either make you or break you. They can either lift you up or let you down. You have no time to worry, um, to be around people who don't celebrate you. I don't care if you've known them forever. You have no t no time to be around people who don't ce celebrate you. You need you need people to uplift you. You need people to say, "Girl, man, you can do this. Man, let me help you." Man, trust the Lord to bring the word to you. I, I'll be praying for you. God bless you. I hope you enjoy, I hope you enjoyed my sermon for tonight. I'll see you soon. Bye. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. See you later. Bye. And if you want to know what that scripture was again, it's Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. It's a great scripture when it comes to defeating uh, the devil and his devices. And often God works through, um, God works through trouble and sometimes things that um, God sent may look like the devil, but they're to perfect you. Stay the course, honey. Don't give up. Stay the course, man. Don't give up on that business. Don't give up on that relationship because God sent it. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's not worthwhile or sent by God. Sometimes the hardest things get the greatest gems. Bye, guys. See you later.